Lord, we just, we want to thank you for another time of sharing with you. And we plug into the, the Passion Week to thank our Lord Jesus Christ for his suffering, his death, and then his resurrection. Saints of God, the topic today is the power of the resurrection. The, the resurrection is the most significant event in history. The Christian faith, the salvation, and walk with our walk with God hinge on the resurrection. The resurrection is the power of the divine that conquered the grave and conquered the laws of gravity that today astrologers and scientists, they cannot understand it. And this is because the mystery of the resurrection essentially is beyond human comprehension. On Golgotha Hills, Christ paid the price for sin. And he, before he went to Golgotha, he traveled in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was, he was in excruciating pain, knowing that the time, his time on earth was concluding. And the Lord at the Garden of Gethsemane in great agony, but read, said, de, 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 handed it over to God and said, not, nevertheless, not my will, but your will, O Lord. So at the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ surrendered to what will be the greatest history of mankind. So he died, was buried, and was resurrected, and he paid the price on Calvary Cross. A sense of God, the resurrection is a phenomenal message to the world. And that's why at this time, the whole world is agog, plugging into the season of Easter. And the resurrection also validates the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And incidentally, most importantly, the resurrection separates Christianity from all other religions because the heads of all other religions are known to still remain in their graves. But only our Lord Jesus Christ ascended. Only our Lord Jesus Christ resurrected and went to heaven because his body could not be found. There is a, 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 th that's an evidence. Because his body was not, could not be found anywhere, it's an ev uh, it, then it testifies to, to the power of the resurrection that exhumed his body above the laws of gravity. And coming to the issue of the resurrection, you, you must have a relationship with Christ to really appreciate and to understand what resurrection means. And for, for his death, burial, and resurrection, he went through a lot of suffering, so a tremendous suffering, and cried many times, was whipped, brutalized, bruised, and that's why the church has dedicated this week to remember, to commemorate his suffering, his pains, the agony. And we as Christians, in your having a relationship and building history with the Lord, you should also be ready and willing to identify with the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection manifests in us meant in different ways, in varied and individualized ways. And Apostle Paul was so en engrossed in the resurrection, in the walk with God, that he declared that I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Yes, and that's because the resurrection manifests in us differently, and uh, some people go the extra length. He gave his all, that is uh, 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 Apostle Paul, and, and did not even care. Uh, he seriously identified with the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the resur this resurrection also means we should also be able to uh, uh, have long suffering, the spirit of long suffering, and be able to bear some of the things that Apostle Paul called mild afflictions. So that when we are going through tribulations, uh, suffering, some these things essentially bring us closer to the cross. The catastrophes, the adversities, human calamities, they bring us close to the cross. They knock us to our knees and we begin to look for our God, to be able to say, Lord, where are you? 
But the Lord has also said, when you, when you look for me, when you knock, I'll open the doors. When you seek me, I will find you. So on the integrity of the word of God, you will see that in your walk with Christ, Christ has all, in your walk with God, God has answered many prayers at his own time. So the revelation of, uh, of the resurrection is something that should come from the Holy Spirit. And when we are going through some of these encounters that are uncomfortable, human problems, it could be sickness, it could be finances, it could be worry, it could be earthquakes, it could be wars, it could be tribulations uh, and sufferings. When we, are, when we are going through some of these afflictions, I also want you to understand, to be careful with the Lord, and as in your quiet moments, when you make your reflections, you will also see that those moments you are going through those mild afflictions we are also moments that the supernatural is happening in your life. You, are also, you may also be having divine encounters, angelic encounters. And um, in, in some of the suffering, some of us may also have noticed that uh, uh, that, that was the time friends and families uh, abandoned us. So when you get to that moment, just in case you're under the sound of my voice and you're listening to this message, if, you're fi if you suddenly find yourself abandoned, please uh, plug into the Spirit and understand that that also will bring you closer to God. That's a time for you to really have a one-on-one -on -one and build a relationship with God because God is form formidable. He's reliable. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, uh, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but also says that the Lord delivers the righteous from every affliction. And that's why in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Apostle Paul declared, and I read, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Because Apostle Paul realized that some of those things he went through, all the things he went through, he was identifying in the fellowship of the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And that was why uh, the apostles, of, uh, the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, they went through tremendous afflictions, but because uh, the resurrection on its own also uh, manifested in varied and individualized ways, quickened their spirits that they saw Christ resurrect. And uh, that was the, the message of the cross, to take it all over the world. And they didn't care whether they were killed or stoned or, or brutalized or in jail. Yes, they rejoiced in those afflictions because Apostle Paul also declared that it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in him. So these are extreme moments that Apostle Paul, even in suffering, you know, he rejoiced because he knew that uh, Christ was the high priest that has ascended to the heavens to make intercessions for the world and uh, will meet with him. And, we, and the, his crown of thorns will also turn to crown of glory. But there are a lot of benefits about the resurrection. Uh, the power that raised Jesus from the grave was a tremendous force that ruled the world today. And I want to uh, um, emphasize that that power that even the scientists cannot understand because it beats completely the laws of gravity, it beats human comprehension, that power also is able to break chains, it's able to break shut doors, effata, and the doors will open. The doors will open. You just keep prophesying and crushing those doors because uh, the Lord also honors prophetic declarations because they are uh, pronouncements of faith that the Lord honors. So from different dimensions of your suffering, when you plug into the power of the resurrection, uh, the power of the resurrection is not just for this moment. It's a daily experience. It's the spirit that rules the world. And these, uh, that power is alive any day to crush serpents, to brutalize cobras, yes, and, and uh, to, to, uh, to neutralize, to break causes. Causes and spells of generations and generations past. Even the, the things that happened in our lives, in our ancestry, that predate our very existence. The resurrection is able to, the resurrection power is able to break strongholds and crush the mountains, the Zerubbabel mountains, and they will become plains. And also to fill the valley. 
Because the power of the resurrection demonstrates to us there's actually no impossibility with God. So we want to thank our Lord Jesus Christ for his suffering. We thank our Lord Jesus Christ for his death burial. We also thank him for resurrecting uh, up to uh, the right hand of, our, of God the Father and where he becomes our high priest. And he has also suffered the things we suffered because he was man, he was God. At Golgotha, Christ nailed the problems of the world, including the sins of the world, to the cross. That's why today when we are praying and we are afflicted and we have a body, we should feel free to send all those burdens to the cross because that was where the Lord nailed it. And the grave also, he conquered the grave. Uh, and that is why, because he rose from the grave, that's the resurrection power. We are also partakers of that victory because he conquered the grave. He conquered every human problem. And that's, that's why there is no impossibility with him. And then we share, we are partakers of that victory. Hence, and victory is the believer's inheritance. There's indisputable evidence about the resurrection. Astrologers and all different people in different fields, intellectuals in different fields, they have, they have de uh, debated on this, even there have been theological debates. But the point is that the indisputable evidence is that the body of Christ could not be seen. And again, the, the fact that Christ lives, uh, you know, it, it was, was, was phenom it, it can be witnessed even in our individual experiences as Christians. Uh, when you meet with that resurrection power, if you used to be a chain smoker, suddenly you stop smoking because it's an overwhelming power that comes into the body, uh, into our human body, yes, and gives us the nature of Christ, transforms us. So the resurrection power, when you meet the resurrection power, it's very transforming. It transformed Paul, even when, as Paul was uh, in his journey uh, uh, on the way to Damascus to go relationship with Christ and understand it, uh, since the grave could not hold the Christ, that, uh, could not hold the Christ, that means, that demonstrates the fact that no power can actually hold us. There will be no limitations in our lives and uh, the, may, may the resurrection continue, to, it, it rules the whole world and uh, sets the captives free from all bondages. Uh, closed doors, uh, assuming that you are having problems, you can't get through anything, you can't get through any door. I, 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 I stand on the integrity of the angels rolled away the stone and the ministry of angels, may they roll away the stones in our lives. Whatever stones are blocking our lives and our destinies, let that which happened in the resurrection. Yes, on Golgotha, uh, it was clear that the crown of thorns turned into a crown of glory. So experientially, you will understand that whatever you go through, those thorny areas sometimes eventually will turn to celebrations. And Psalm 30 says that the Lord turns the wailings into a joyful dance. And Psalm 50 tells us that when we pray that the Lord comes down to listen and that he will not be silent. So he has a responsibility not to be silent to our prayers and uh, to use the power of the resurrection to crush difficult areas in our lives. Concluding this message, the pains of, of, that Christ went through, regardless, he bore it, and that's why we should not uh, commit suicide. We should not kill ourselves when we are going through those, but hold onto the horns of the altar and hold onto the word of God and plug into the power of the resurrection. And we will see our, mi our misery, our, our, our misery turn to ministries because uh, sometimes the Lord uses the very difficult things you have passed through to be uh, foundations for your ministry, foundations for new visions. For, for new things to happen in, your, in, in, your, in our lives. And so may the miracle that the resurrection bring, may it bring new miracles into our lives. 
May it bring even creative miracles, even in our bodies, in our bones. Because if, if that power could exhume the body of Christ, that power can penetrate our bones, our marrows, our sinews, our minds, even our minds, our in intellect, to be able to renew us by the power of the resurrected Christ. The miracle of, of the resurrection abounds in, in many ways. It brings healing to the body. He can turn, cap, cap, it breaks cap, captivity. Re, it, it releases us from, from every bondage, no matter where the bondage is coming from. Is it coming from the marine spirit? Is it coming from, a, from astral traveling? Is it whatever? Is it coming from witches or wizards? Christ, the power of the resurrection, can actually deal with all of those powers and subdue them. So may the power of the resurrection that we commemorate at this time, may it bring good health, new, new, newness into our lives, into our health. May it give us new visions, new revelations. May it give us new destinies and new dreams. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Thanks for listening.